It looks like you and the other kids in the neighborhood are getting a little bit restless and bored, so time to grab some shovels, go to a place you're not supposed to be in, and let's dig for treasure. Let's Dig for Treasure here is part of a trilogy of games. I'll be covering all of these independently, but you can go check these out. Uh, and in this one, you are going to be pushing your luck. That's the main idea. There are cards in the center of the table. You will be taking one, revealing it, continuing to do that until you choose to stop, collect what you've flipped over, or you bust because something bad comes up, all right? So, Let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's a very, very simple, straightforward card game with, of course, a ridiculous theme juxtaposing the retro artwork with a, a pretty morbid and just ridiculous theme. They are, as you can tell, digging for treasure in, uh, well, a cemetery. So let's take a look at how this works and I'll see you on the other side. Setting up the game is exceedingly easy. We're going to shuffle up the deck of cards. We are going to split it up into three about even decks and you are ready to go. That's it. So the game is, uh, like I said, a push your luck game and you are going to be choosing any one deck. It doesn't matter. Flipping a card. You can change decks. Uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. And then you will either bust, at which point you score nothing. And that happens if you pull two worms or if you pull one of the evil skeletons or choosing to stop after something and then banking your cards, okay? We're gonna keep going until one of these decks is gone. At that point, whoever has the most points is the winner. So you flip over a card and it might be that. It says treasure map. When you score this, which is when you bank it, okay? Look at the top four cards of any dick stack, score one of those cards immediately and return the rest in any order you want to. This card itself, treasure map, is worth zero points. So I might grab another card from somewhere. It doesn't matter, like I said. This is uh, Old Man Murray's Milk. When scoring at game end, you can pair this with a cookie and it's worth five points instead. Right now it's worth nothing. I'm gonna keep going. I'll pull one from here. Loyal Dog. There we go. That one is worth five points. And it says when you score this, leave it in front of you. While this is in front of you, you may move it to the score pile, to your score pile, to discard an evil skeleton you dig up. So one time I'll be able to stop an evil skeleton from getting me. So I might stop now and bank this. Once I bank this, I'll deal with the treasure map. So I'll go one, two, three, four, grab these. I'll look, I've got here dirt, worms, sleepy grave digger, and then worms again. Okay, well, that, those are not great. I'll just uh, take uh, the, the worms, I guess. I would bank that. And these go back up to the top of the pile in any order. Next player goes. So they start flipping. Dirt. Just one point. Evil Skeleton. When you dig this up, you're done. So you discard all of these. You get to keep none of them. And the next player goes. That's it. This continues going around and around until, like I said, one of these piles... Oh my goodness! The Ark of the Covenant is worth 40 points. That's the most in the entire thing. So you'll see some of the points are sort of wild, right? One point for the worms or the dirt, 40 points for this. But there's cards in here that will be negative 10, negative 20, things like that. It's, you know, you're going to be giving each other cards that are bad sometimes. You'll be pushing your luck and busting. You'll have all sorts of things. There's a card in here that makes worms worth five points instead of one. So if you get that, then getting, you know, one worm is good. You'll still bust if you get two, but getting one is pretty good. You can bank that. And so that's it. That's what's happening in the game. Most points at the end is the winner. You basically understand how this works now. And I'll tell you, I think discovering some of the weird and wacky cards in these decks is part of the fun. So I'm not going to show you too many of them. So here we go. Let's go back up top. All right, so let's dig right into this one, uh, pun I guess intended. Um, starting right at the top with the theme. The theme in this one is very irreverent. It is apparent. It is obvious that it's funny. The idea of the kids, there's always these two kids that show up on all the cards, having shovels, digging, their silly little pirate hat, and he's got a little paper hat on juxtaposed with what they're finding, what they're doing, finding old old man so-and-so's milk and drinking it. I mean, it is 
beyond ridiculous, and it works for me. I think it's pretty, pretty hilarious stuff. It's good, as long as you have that bizarre sense of humor that these games almost demand of the, uh, the player. So, thumbs up on the theme. The aesthetics. Great aesthetics. Fantastic card quality. I really like the artwork in this one. I think the different touches on the different kinds of cards is, uh, is great. And um, the whole thing is just a deck of cards. So, not much else to talk about there, but the cards are great. And, and they need to be, right? The replay value suffers a little bit in this one because there is no build and there's very little control, right? By the end of the game, and I guess I'm, I'm going into game arc here a little bit, um, you're doing the same things by the end of the game that you're doing, you know, at the beginning of the game, pushing your luck. So you're going to, because there's no, you can't play this game, go away, think about it, and come back to it and... and try a different thing. There is there is simply not that kind of build or control. So that's going to suffer. And then going into game arc, like I said, no real build. I think if the game had something that would allow you to get better at whatever it is you're doing, then there would be a game arc built into it. As it is right now, there just isn't. It's sort of the same thing. I think the game's, the game's length is fine. I think it will stay funny, ridiculous, you have, you know, moments where you push your luck and you shouldn't have, you have moments where you hit something tremendously big and ha ha ha, look at what I dug up. So that's fun, but the, you know, rise and climb of emotions uh, is, is a very, very tiny moment. Again, ha ha, or whoops, I'm done, that's it. That can happen literally the first turn or the last one, nothing else is going to change. So the game mark isn't really there. The ease of play, amazing. This is by far the easiest of these three. So if you're looking for something that is just so easy, you could literally not teach this game. You can literally shuffle the game, split it into three piles, and start, you as the one who knows the game, start playing. And as you flip over a card, explain what's going on, and then even if you get a, one of those evil skeletons, you're like, okay, well, if you pull that, you're done, go ahead, pull. You can stop whenever you want. Like, that's it. That's all you really need to tell anybody. Um, so it is a great game to get up to speed and playing, no matter if someone new is sitting at a table or not, and just, just right away. So very good for that. And then lastly, Tactics, Luck, and Strategy. And it gets a thumbs down there because there is a ton of luck in this one. Um, it's basically pure luck, really. And there are... If, if there were more cards, like the dog that you saw in the overview there, that stuck around and did something, it would certainly help the entire thing. The dog, the dog when you when you get the dog and you, you put it out in front of you, before you sort of move it aside and bank it, and it'll stop one of those evil skeletons. Great, I really like that. But that's basically, I think, the only card in the entire deck that does it. If not, I might be forgetting one, but that's basically it. One or two cards that do that. And I wish more of the cards would do something that stuck around so that you could plan, not, you know, plan, but sort of that card lets you push your luck more, right? And uh, I wish there were other cards that would do a little bit more of those sorts of things so that you would have a build. You could feel like you have access to things you don't, right? You have it with that card and that's basically it. So it's just then luck. It's, the, it's a binary choice. Push my luck again, stop. That's it. I guess if you get a bad card, who do I stick it with? And thankfully, the points aren't very trackable. So whenever you have a bad card and you're, you're meant to give to someone, you have to go with a gut feeling like, oh, you know, Johnny over there has been doing really well. Here's negative 10 points for you. So I like that. Um, overall... I'm maybe sounding like I'm being harsher on this one than I mean to be. I think it's a great looking game. I think it's incredibly easy and uh, straightforward to teach and play. I just think it's a push your luck game in about the purest sense and it definitely puts the emphasis on luck. There's a lot of luck in this one. It's also a very short game though, right? So if that's what you're looking for and you want a, a pretty good laugh while you're doing it, I certainly recommend this one. I've enjoyed my plays of this. I've enjoyed teaching it to different people. 
And again, I've really, like, by the end there, I just don't really need to teach it. I just sort of shuffle it and go. So, I think this is one that, that would make a pretty good gift to someone who is not much of a gamer. Because they'll get it. They'll, they'll jump right into it and enjoy it. So, there you go. This is going to get from me a 7 out of 10. That's a seal of approval. I do recommend it. As far as push your luck games, are there sharper ones, smarter ones? Sure. For pure goofiness and fun and irreverence, this is pretty good for that. So there you go. Let's dig for treasure. And that's going to do it for me, everybody. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.